what opportunities do we have? Uh, as I say, we've got whole new classes of gadget out there around the person, around the home, in your car. We've got new applications that would be enabled on the PC and the smartphone that use those devices. And, and analogous to this is that the PC was revolutionized when we had USB. All of a sudden, we could put any USB thing into my USB-enabled compu computer. We now have Bluetooth in the smartphone. We can put any Bluetooth smart device into the smartphone and do something useful with it. It's the same revolutionary thing. So while we have the USB missile launcher, why haven't we got the Bluetooth missile launcher? Think about it. Why haven't we? We can connect those things then to web services. So effectively, anything can connect to the web. And we could have new social applications. So the beer glass. Well, the obvious thing for a beer glass is that when it's empty, a new one comes along with full that is automatically replenished. That would be fantastic. Of course, your beer glass could also talk to your Facebook page so that when you drink beer, it says, I've drunk one beer, so that when you get to work the following morning, you can work out actually how many beers you drank and not lie or not remember. And now, that may not be a good thing for some people, but you know, it might be useful for some others. It may not be beer. It may be, you know, how many sweets did I have? How many chocolates did I have? How many, you know, why can't we put a Bluetooth device in, in a chocolate box? Might be useful. And the available market is reasonably large. You know, there's probably over 10 billion phones and apps out there that are available market. Smart energy, meters and displays, about a billion. So there's about half a billion homes on the planet. Um, home automation white goods and HVAC. You know, in the Western world, we have, you know, a washing machine, dishwasher, dryer, refrigerator, freezer. You know, that, that's four at a minimum. All of those will need Bluetooth Low Energy in so that you can check them, so the service guys can look at them. Health, well-being, sports and fitness, that's another 10 billion mark. If you go through all of these, there's quite a few billions of devices out there. It's quite a little bit of a market. That's quite exciting. And of course, we have a whole bunch of profiles to date that are available or in development. Uh, this is just a cross section. If you go to technical specifications adopted, you'll see an even bigger list. And we need gateways. Uh, we're working on gateways at the moment within the Bluetooth SIG in the internet working group. Um, and the key to this is that the devices that support Bluetooth talk through the gateway and then out to the internet or the other way around. So effectively, the gateway is not part of Bluetooth. It's just a way of getting data from a device out through that gateway out to the internet. So let's take your um, refrigerator. Your refrigerator probably has a motor in it that is compressing some liquid that transfers heat from one part of the refrigerator to another part of the refrigerator. So if you transfer heat away from the food and out to the room, you're cooling the air in the refrigerator. That's how refrigerators work. What happens when that motor starts going wrong? Well, normally, the average consumer will wait until the refrigerator breaks, destroy all the food that they spent thousands of dollars on or hundreds of dollars on, ruin all that food, have to throw it away, and then buy a new refrigerator because it costs so much to repair after everything's been destroyed. Of course, the alternative is that the refrigerator sends you an email to say, oh, by the way, my motor's going to break in the next three months. Perhaps you'd like to repair it now. Saving you hundreds of dollars in broken food, hundreds of dollars in time trying to find a new refrigerator that has the same Bluetooth low energy device in it. And all of that, all it needs is a gateway. So we need gateways to be out there. And there's a couple of models there, one which is using IPv6 directly, another one which is providing proxies out to the internet. So what products can you build? Well, if the Bluetooth SIG has already standardized it, you can just use one of the existing profiles and services that are out there and work with other interoperable products. One of the amazing things I saw was that when the heart rate monitor profile 
was first uh, adopted by the Bluetooth SIG. A week later, I went onto the iOS App Store to see how many apps were there that could work with that uh, heart rate monitor. 86 in a week. 86 apps. That's amazing. They'd only been adopted for a week, and 86 people had updated their apps to put Bluetooth low energy support in for heart rate monitors. And that was just one week. It's, it's significantly larger now. Of course, you can use the SIG Panorama tool to determine if there's any new profiles that are in development. You can look at the new work proposals. Uh, new work proposal is a new way of starting work within the Bluetooth SIG. So if you've got an idea and you've got a couple of other friends, uh, either part of your ecosystem or competitors, part of your ecosystem, that want to work on a Bluetooth profile, you create a new work proposal. It's only a couple of pages long. You submit that. A week later, you get a, a study group to work on the requirements. So the um, hearing aid industry decided that, hey, Bluetooth would be a really cool technology to use to connect cell phones to hearing aids, or the train station ticket desk to a hearing aid, or the theater booking office to your hearing aid, or a conference like this to your hearing aid, or even simultaneous translation to your hearing aid. So, a few weeks ago, they created a new work proposal for this. They now have a study group. Go join the study group. It's available. Anybody can join who's a member of the Bluetooth SIG. You can join that study group if you care about that industry. Create a requirements document, and then a few months later, we'll create a working group that then creates 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. We'll do prototyping, 1.0, get that adopted. And hey, presto, we've now enabled a whole new market, a whole new set of use cases. If you are working in an industry that isn't covered by Bluetooth today, go and find a couple of other people to talk with, create a new work proposal, and start working on it within the Bluetooth SIG. It's easy. And of course, you can also define your own new proprietary behavior and define your own 128-bit UUIDs for those services and characteristics. So, you know, if you want to work in your own little closed ecosystem, if you think that's the right way of doing it, then you can also do that. I would recommend that you try and create an interoperable pro profile within the Bluetooth SIG. But if you want to do something proprietary, that is also available for you. So a very simple call for action. Learn about Bluetooth Low Energy. It's fantastic technology. I would say that I wrote it. Um, if you've got any questions, then just come and ask me other people in the Bluetooth SIG, Bluetooth SIG staff, uh, read the references, read the books. You need to think about how you can use Bluetooth Low Energy to satisfy market needs. Don't try and use Bluetooth Low Energy to try and satisfy something that already uses wireless. The people who are going to make a lot of money in this market are going to think about new ways of using wireless technology for something that nobody would consider putting wireless technology in today. Nobody is talking about Wi-Fi in seats, because Wi-Fi uses too much power. People will be thinking about putting low energy into seats for hotels and restaurants and anywhere else where they care about where people sit and how long they sit, etc., etc. Find partners to add the value. The Bluetooth ecosystem is not just a few companies, 17,500 companies. And what we heard this morning, it's up to 20,000 companies by the end of this year. There will be people in the Bluetooth SIG who can help you and who, who are part of that ecosystem. So, for example, if you're developing a, let's say, a chair sensor, then there will be module manufacturers, there'll be stack providers, there'll be test equipment manufacturers, there'll probably even be chair manufacturers in the Bluetooth SIG. Go and find them. There are, there are uh, company directories in the Bluetooth SIG. If you're having trouble trying to find that, contact SIG staff, they will help you. And participate. If you want to be involved in the Bluetooth SIG, the best way of getting the most out of the Bluetooth SIG is to contribute to the Bluetooth SIG. Join study groups, join working groups, create new work proposals, work with other members. Yes, it does cost money to become an associate member, but then you can participate in all the technical work. You can get early access to those specifications. You can get uh, a head start in creating uh, prototypes for prototype testing, and you can probably get to market quicker.
and you get discounts on other uh, parts of the Bluetooth SIG. So if you become associate member, then qualification is cheaper, PTS is cheaper, etc., etc. So there's a number of resources that I'd remind you about. So obviously there's a Bluetooth.org website, but there's also Bluetooth.com slash low energy. It's a huge number of resources there. The 4.0 specification itself, um, it's only two and a half thousand pages. It's, it's a great thing to read if you want to get to sleep. Um, there's a very, very long training session that I gave in Seattle a couple of years ago, uh, at the 2010 All Hands meeting. Uh, it's only 473 slides long, so again, it's quite comprehensive. Uh, there's also articles on Bluetooth Low Energy at nickhun.com, and there's also a couple of books, uh, one of which I wrote uh, that um, I'm getting review comments from uh, Toby on at the moment. Any questions? So the question for those who didn't hear is about, is, is audio a technical limitation of the LE spec or is it something that, uh, something else? Frankly, it wasn't something that we designed into low energy at the start. So it's not been designed for sending periodic data. Uh, so if you want to do audio, you either need to do uh, low latency synchronous or isochronous data transfers, which LE doesn't support or you need to do very large uh, latency. So A to DP, for example, we're quite happy with 50 to 100 millisecond latency because you're, you're sending the data from a cell phone. And if it takes 100 milliseconds to get across, then you just think the OS is being a little slow. So in that respect, LE hasn't been designed for audio. I would point out, however, that there is a new work proposal as part of the um, hearing aid to do audio over LE. So that may require some core spec changes. Um, and the study group will be evaluating that and determining whether that is, is necessary or not. Okay, any last question? No, great, okay, thank you very much. <laughs>